Okay. All right. So we are, we're on the record. Uh, why don't you um, introduce yourself to the people, please? Hello, hello. I'm JR, a French artist. Uh, you can hear that by my terrible uh, accent. Uh, and uh, I do, you know, I do art with paper, so you can call me a wallpaper artist. Uh, uh, I, I, I happen to paste a lot on walls, often black and white also. But um, uh, I'm in Paris right now, confined at home in uh, my, uh, you know, studio, uh, which is uh, like a cave. Yeah, it's like know, a and, bat cave uh, in there. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So that's that's why I'm hiding. You look like you've been preparing for this for decades, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all my studios look like that. So actually, it's true. I've been, you know, I'm, I've prepared for worse than that. So that's okay. Yeah. So so um, how how are things where in terms of your immediate area? What's the what's the current situation outside of your Parisian bunker? Um. Look. You know, Paris have been pretty badly hit. France uh, also, especially the east of France. Uh, I have to say, we, we're pretty lucky in France. We have a good system. Uh, people have a good health care. Uh, people who are not working receive a, a good aid, like 80% of their salary from the state. I'm sorry, uh, how, what, what percent of the salary did you say? 80%. Eight zero. Yeah, eight <laughs> oh, zero. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, definitely not America. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, uh, and I haven't, uh, I decided not to use the French system. I keep paying fully all my, uh, all my salary. I have uh, 11 people in France. I didn't want to uh, push weight on the system. So we'll see how this goes. But for now, we keep running like, uh, except that we don't run, everyone's at home. Yeah. But instead, we, we, we started out a project, I'll explain you. But so, um, yeah, France is, is tough. Uh, hospital went to uh, the what they call, you know, the big, uh, you know, to the top right. where it's like crazy. But we had like a transfer to other European country and we kind of helped each other over here. So, you know, of course, there's been people who have been unplugged and stuff, but not as much as we thought. And for now, we still haven't reached the top. But for the first time today was a day where they say there's been less deaths than yesterday, you know. So that, that's a good news, but it still have impact, that close one, it still have impact, you know, uh, the elderly community and uh, all the people who had, um, you know, health issue and some young people too. So, you know, we got to be very careful. With yeah. It. Now, I know you also have a strong presence uh, in a studio in New York City. Do you have a sense of how your team there or your neighbors are doing in, in terms of New York? Yeah. Look, I'm in touch with my team there. Um, same thing in the U.S. We kept all our team, about eight people. They all uh, at their home or went away uh, across the U.S. to be with their family or, you know, uh, get away from the city. But um, they uh, right now they're helping us doing a project in France from their home. But they hope to copy the same model in the U.S. so to stay active. Uh, so that's the main thing is, yeah. you know, it's really how you keep your community active, your team, uh, your school. I have a school that I started just last January. So all my students were like, woo! And then two months later, we're like, stay at home. We're like, what? So, you know, I'm, I'm doing their class live. Some of their class when we have special guests, like actors, directors, we do it live so other people can enjoy it. So actually, it turned out pretty great. Because normally a master class that would have been only for them, uh, you know, thousands of people can enjoy it online. So I've been, you know, that, that's been uh, great. And we, we're switching from my Instagram page to the YouTube page from tomorrow. Um, so I'm learning all this. And, you know, we, we kind of got ahead and like started setting up all those structures so that we can uh, be prepared to be in this for quite a long time, you know. Yeah. What is the, um, so I, I know of you and most of us know of you through these big public works of art all over the world, very participatory, very small D democracy. Uh, are you working on something now? How do you do that work in a state of <laughs> quarantine and lockdown? Good question. Look, first two weeks of real quarantine we have in France, so you can't go out and stuff. I stayed home and that's it. You know, I was not going anywhere. I was kind of, you know, chatting with my students on different applications like Zoom. And um, and then we have a restaurant that we started two years ago 
which is called refettoio. We gather waste food, we cook it like 3,000 meals, and then we serve it to homeless refugees in the heart of Paris. Of course, we were closed. They closed it, didn't even question it. We can't have guests there. But two weeks after, on a Saturday, they, the city called us and said, look, we're actually in a pretty bad shape. Uh, there's thousands of homeless. We don't know how to feed them. What can you do? And we say, well, let us reopen it. They say, yeah, yeah, you can reopen your kitchen, not the restaurant. Mm. They say, great, whatever you let us reopen, we do. So they gave us the permit on the Sunday. We reopened. I'm talking that was exactly two weeks ago. We reopened the kitchen. We went and I posted something on Instagram. Tons of people say, oh, wait, actually I have all my food for my restaurants because I didn't expect the confinement to be so long. Let me give you my food. So I have a pickup truck. I ran all over Paris. People dropped it on the back of my pickup. So there was no contact. And I, I brought it back to the restaurant and we cooked 150 meals a day. By the end of week one, I was like, all right, that's great. We did it. That's fine. We can keep doing that. But why don't we do 5,000 meals a day? <laughs> and we all look at each other and we're like, yeah, but how do we do that? And yeah. literally we're like, actually, we don't. We don't know. We can't do it in this kitchen. We don't have the food. And we don't have the delivery guy and the resources. So we started uh, thinking about it. That was just last last week. So this week, actually, since Monday. And we say, oh, wait, all those restaurants all around the city are closed. Why don't we ask them to just use their kitchen? They put their chef and we find the food for them. We bring it to them. They cook it. They make us 100, 150 million. We come and pick it up. And so just this week, we've opened uh, 12 restaurants like that. So it means that we went from 150 meals to more than 1,000 meals a day. And next week, we're going closer to the 5,000 meals a day. And we go and gather all the waste food. We also went and go all big, you know, supermarket to say, give us all your extras. And um, quickly, my students started to say, hey, I have a car. My mom have a car. And then we had a few people who say, hey, I can do delivery. Then we have a truck company who say, all our trucks, are sitting in storage, you want to use some. And so today I was driving Paris with a refrigerated truck, you know, and that's, that's the new, you know, era we're living during this period of like the city of Paris saying, look guys, we give you all permits to uh, stock food in the heart of the city, even on the street around your restaurant if you don't have space. We are on an extraordinary situation. There should be extraordinary measure and also extraordinary help between people. That's what I'm saying. You have, of course, to push it and to make it happen. But I was not about to let that participatory aspect of my work yeah. not affect a social crisis like this. And we're taking full sense of it and, and effect of it. And so I'm pretty excited. I had no idea how we would do it last Monday. And, you know, I feel pretty proud when I drive my uh, refrigerator truck and see all the volunteers and the great people who brought their minds. How do you... Um... That's first of all, that's beautiful. And as you're learning really fast and it's nice to see your city adjust the rules to help solve a problem that they're having, as opposed to saying like, no, 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 we got this. Even if they, if they don't given the nature of the coronavirus, how do you maintain the safety of your volunteers, your drivers, the chefs, uh, the delivery people, and of course the folks who you're feeding? Yeah. So very important. For example, uh, we have masks and gloves for everyone. Uh, that's one thing. But that's not enough. Of course, it's about uh, a safety barrier. So, for example, no one is in the kitchen with the chef who cooks. Right. The chef got the food, which is all the package that is infected. Then he cooks it in his restaurant. He has no contact with any of the team and volunteer. He's by himself in his own restaurant. We just come and pick up the bag. And we come with gloves, pick up the bag, put them in a truck, deliver it to... Uh, a lot of hotels have been taken by the city to put homeless in it. So we deliver it all to the hotel. People come at the lobby and grab it, or I, we go door to door and deliver it to their front door. Uh, and if not, we drop it to people in the street on our way. So, um, of course, there's a risk. I'm not saying there's no risk. And we, uh, you know, a lot of my team is not in trucks and doing that. They're, they're working from home. And that's fine because, you know what, we need people on logistics. We need people to answer email of all the volunteers. We need to see what's right, what's wrong. Someone's want to give us two tomatoes. Maybe we're not going to pass by, grab them. We're looking more at 5,000 tomatoes right now. <laughs> so, you know, all this, there's a big job. Someone is taking care of the social media. So we, you know, all my team is busy on this. And the truth is we're trying to do something that can be copied anywhere. Yeah. So that in New York, my team there is hoping to do the same because same thing, they're going to be amazing mind 
jobless at home who's going to be like, hey, I was the best in logistics in the fucking world and now I'm jobless. I can give a help on your little project of saving 5,000 meals a day. That seems like nothing to me. We, those people are actually super happy to help. And we have a few in my team because I don't have the brain for that. I'm just a delivery guy. <laughs> those guys are making the logistics. That's very important. And um, and then, you know, we have the ones who are younger, who have cars, who are ready to take a bit more risk, who don't, who can affect their family. And they're like, you know what, I'll, I'll take the risk and uh, and, you know, I did the two weeks of confinement and I've been outside the last two weeks. Feels good to breathe. Of course, you have to be careful. Um, but uh, it's kind of crazy to see a city like that. You yeah. know, it's really... Yeah. I, I'm expecting that someone in, in your field, in your artistic expertise, has like the coolest, most fashionable masks and face coverings around. Are you, <laughs> are you balling out on the face coverings, JR? Yeah, I have. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. It's pretty simple. It's just going to be... Uh, a printed version of the face on the mask. So, right. you know, it just blends, <laughs> you know, nothing crazy, but just, you know, uh, just an app. So I, I, I was about to do a test today, actually, of this on material on fabric. I didn't have time because that yeah. comes secondary. And today I was uh, out on the street and we, we went to meet a, a head of a big, big uh, supermarket chain this morning. And I have to say, the guy was amazing. He didn't mm. say, put my logo here and there. He was like, guys, all right, what do you need? We say, well, we need a lot of pasta. We need a lot of rice. Those people need 2,500 calories a day. How can you help us? He was like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, we got, I'm going to call the head of all those companies, like Barilla, Nutella, Ferrer, all those guys that provide the big goods. And I'm going to ask them. And everything they don't give you, I'm going to give it to you from my supermarket. And he just went on calls and said, hey, how are you? How is it going? And, you know, he's the head of Sons of Supermarket. So those guys pick the call because they're hoping to sell a lot right. to him. Too. And then he said, guys, would you send me a semi truck to this address? I, I want to have this uh, small organization. You, maybe you haven't heard of it. They were not big before, but they're trying to be big during that time only. Oh, sure. Well, I'll give you a hand on that. Let me send you some pasta. So, you know, the effect of like, we did it small for two weeks and now it's going to become yeah. big. It's exciting. We came back, we told all the volunteers, okay, we get ready. It's going to be a lot of delivery this weekend. And everyone was so excited because, you know, we're going to have to live to this. This might take a while. This uh, might be longer than we all think. This might change the way we live. Um, but I'm not going to stop being positive and being excited about things because there's always like great people around there ready to help. There's always, you know, a great energy to like to feed the soul of people and and that's what I'll keep working on no matter what even if it's hard and we know some people that get affected so we're never getting through this but you know um we have to we have to face it I love your your positivity and your energy is very infectious in a positive way uh unlike this virus my my next question maybe my last uh, is because of the work you've done all over the world for so many years You've got, in my perspective, like eyes and ears around the world. You're connected to all these communities. What are you seeing or hearing from your colleagues in Brazil, in, uh, in Southeast Asia, in various nations in Africa, in Latin America, in the prisons that you've been working in most recently? Can you give any kind of an update uh, based on your connection to all these spots around the world? Yeah, I mean, uh, Brazil, we have the school since 10 years. I've, uh, we've created the two... Um, crowdfunding uh, and they've been very successful and the kids there just took the money, went and bought uh, goods, made bags and delivered a bag of food and, and toilet paper and all that stuff to every single house in the favela. I was pretty amazed because when they asked me, it's small amount there, but those amounts goes a long way. Yeah. And I was just looking at videos today, literally the money they raised last week, they were already like having trucks of, uh, and then they delivered it to the favela. So they haven't seen the big splash of it. They're all very scared. They're all getting ready. It's very difficult in the favela to respect it. You know, where I deliver food right now in the suburbs of Paris, in the projects, of course, everyone's outside and the kids are around. It's tough. I mean, you know, people know, but people often don't have the choice. So it's really tough for them. And it's tough also for the police who's trying to tell everyone to stay home. Uh, so I'm seeing the situation here, but I'm imagining how in a favela, it's such another context and those countries like uh, uh, India and other will, 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 will uh, get hit really hard. I spoke to my friends in prison also. Um, they're saying most of them stay in cells. They don't want to go out. They don't take the risk to go to the yard. 
but they say a lot of them do. Um, but uh, definitely the virus is there. It's, it's close. Um, it's really hard to communicate. Uh, so um, I only had those few infos, which was from five days ago. And they were staying in uh, in their cells, and uh, and I'm waiting. I've I've sent them letters, but it takes always a little while to come back. Um, but it's you know it's uh, really uncertain uh, time for them uh, there too. And uh, we have the same problem in France too. So all those places are about to explode too, because you know uh, there's lots of cases in jails, and um, what can you do about it? It spreads so fast. Yeah. 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 Is there anything uh, else you want to add, talk about, share with people? It's kind of my my open door for you. Um, look, you know, uh, we. I mean, um, right now in Paris, uh, I have to say, with the beautiful sun, uh, the good days, it's uh, it's really strange to see such a beautiful city with a beautiful sun and uh, just empty. It's really strange, you know, I it's just driving through like an empty town like that. I never thought I would see it like this. Um, and seeing everyone at home, I'm sure it's the same in the U.S. Everyone claps their hand at 8 o'clock by their window. Um, you feel how people are in an emergency to feel the presence of each other. We, we clap for them, we clap for ourselves also. We clap to stay alive. We clap to feel the clap of the other. Um, like when we go to the theater and we hear the laugh of the others and we feel as one. We'll always need to feel as one and we might have to live through some time through screens like that, through masks. Um, but uh, we'll have to come back from this because as the human species, that's who we are. You know, we need this as part of our essential element to survive. So um, I do whatever I can in my walk in the field I do. Uh, to, to keep that, to like when I organize tastings and stuff like that, uh, because I, I believe that, you know, we, we can't live just to through, through screens. Uh, they create too much depression. And through times like that, it would be amazing because conversation like that can happen. You know, words can get out. I see my students getting so many, like, classes and stuff. And even more than if the teachers and the, the guests would have to come to the school. Yeah. There's more because they just have to do it from home. So it's way easier. But um, I want to go back to the old school way after, and I hope we can. Yeah, well, I hope so too. How do people learn more about or support the Refectorio or your school efforts or, or anything else you want us to know about? So very simple. On my Instagram at JR, uh, I post about all those stuff. And uh, I just started the YouTube page, youtube.com slash JR, and I'm going to do the first live tomorrow. Uh, this one is going to be in French, but all the next one are going to be in English with lots of amazing directors and actors from the U.S. that you, you know really well that will come and, uh, and give a class to the students and everyone will be able to listen. So uh, bear with me. It's my first time on those YouTube channels. <laughs> I called the young kid from Spain with like the biggest star on this and I said, help me. He's like, all right, all right, amigo, let me think. You need to do this. You need to do that. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, but, you know, I get there. Well, thank you for making time to talk to me. Uh, these words are going to be, be heard and seen around the world. And it's just it's a really beautiful message. And thank you for what you're doing in terms of turning waste into generosity and finding ways to stay connected. Your work is so connective and, and all of us are so appreciative of it. So you found a new way to do that participatory art. Uh, which is really nice to see, man. Thank you. Thank you, brother. And I'll be listening to your show. Good.